Hi, my name is Robert Jones. I was born in Buffalo, New York. I was the youngest of four boys. One has passed on. My mother's mother came from Scotland in the 1920s through Ellis Island in New York. There she laid down her roots. I grew up on the west side of Buffalo. It was the toughest neighborhood in Buffalo. My mother raised four boys on her own. When I was 12, I had my first little business, mowing lawns, shoveling snow, and odd jobs. I would buy most of my school supplies, give some money to mom, and save the rest. I never felt poor growing up. We all managed to get by somehow. Our mother was incredible raising us on her own. I come from a long line of craftsmen. My great-grandfather helped engineer the Empire State Building. And in a New York tradition, you grew up doing what your father did. I was sent to vocational tech schools where we learned a variety of trades, carpentry, aviation, sheet metal, and auto mechanics. We were taught to take pride in our work, to do the best job possible, work hard, learn a trade, and get that white picket fence later on in life. When I finished school, we were ready to work at one of the many trades we spent years learning. I took a different direction. New York was changing. Talk that the American dream was dying. You weren't going to get that pension and that gold watch. There is turmoil in the labor unions, and the hard streets of Buffalo seem to get harder. I needed to get away. So my oldest brother, Ronald, got me a job out on a place they called the Great Pacific Northwest, Seattle, Washington. I got the job with the National Park System, working in Seattle at the local parks, the Young American Conservation Corps, rebuilding trails and stairway systems. What a fabulous opportunity. Wow. The city was alive. There was mountains, lakes, an ocean. The people were different, and to me, no snow to speak of. Not like the snow belts of Buffalo and the frigid icy cold coming off of Lake Erie. To me, Seattle was a land of opportunity. At the end of summer, I called my mother. I said, I'm staying in this new place with my oldest brother, Ronald. I never looked back. I had just turned 16. A few years later, my brother Larry came out to live in Seattle, who also is a fused and slump glass artist of 30 years and is an incredible technician in his own right. The boys got their money together and our mom joined us, where she lives today at 78 years old. While working at the YACC, I met a young fellow named Joseph DeCamp. He first introduced me into the world of hand blown art glass. I still was not sure what I wanted to do for a career, so I left for Alaska and went fishing so I could earn some money to travel. I went and traveled the world for almost two years. From merry old England, I traveled to India, climbed mountains in the Himalayas, went on incredible journeys and adventures. A year into my journeys, I went to Varanasi. I met a sadhu at a temple. A sadhu is a wandering holy man, but there is something very different about this holy man. He did Katorsha's yogi in the morning, spoke and blessed people in the afternoon, and blew glass in the evening. I was so impressed by this man that I stayed with him for three days. He had a little pot belly furnace that was underground, fueled by patties of dried cow dung. He used his hands, his toes, and made little ornaments from a glass pipe. He was truly a one-man show. After being introduced with glass in Seattle, I knew something of the trade, and that was when I decided it was time to go home and start my new career.
On returning home, Joseph DeCamp helped me get my first job at the Glass Eye, making ornaments and vases. And from there, my career has flourished. My first five years was working under different glass artists, learning the trade, and also experimenting with shapes on my own. Glass blowing was very expensive and somewhat discouraging at times, especially when your pieces fell on the floor all the time. At this time, Seattle was just becoming alive in the glass blowing movement. We did not have much in the way of supplies and tools, so drawing on my background from trade school, I started a business called Blockhead Tools, making wooden glass blowing tools, blocks, paddles, and parchofies. This business, like most of my business, flourished quickly, and it became a trend. It also gave me the money to keep experimenting and learning to blow glass. A young man I met out in Seattle, who just happened to be from Amherst, New York, Phil O'Reilly, encouraged me with the new business. As I was starting this business, he was starting the first color rod business in Seattle. He offered for me to be his distributor, and later on, I blew glass for him, we became good friends, and to this day, he's still my mentor. Many more years went on, learning this incredible and difficult trade. Then a decision needed to be made of my own direction. I needed to branch off. So I went into the fine art of hand blowing glass, making vessel shapes, developing my sense of design and style. That went on for a few more years. One day, sitting at the glass blowing bench in 1997, I started thinking about the trade schools I went to. I said to myself, I really love glass and function, the architectural aspect of glass. That was my roots, and that was something I could understand. It always seemed the people in the galleries and the clients wanted me to be somebody I couldn't be. They wanted me to make a statement with my artwork, whether it be spiritual, or political or abstract. I did not look at glass like that. To me, it was always about form and function. From 1997 to 98, I built my own little glass blowing studio for myself, by myself. I pounded metal, I laid brick, and I finally lit my studio. And I went into making architectural hand blowing glass. As a young man coming to the great Northwest, I was so impressed by the awesome beauty of the mountains and the ocean. It's not to be surprised that a lot of my ideas come from those first experiences out here. 
and a strong belief in a power much greater than myself. My faith has brought me to this point. I love sayings, I love stories, and people. And the journey continues to the next phase of this artistic career. I believe we are all artists inside. Some just develop it more and make a life of it. And the best part about the journey is when you get a chance to share that happiness with another. I like to say, you're doing good. Passion of the trade is part of life.